Welcome to another edition of Horse Center, everyone. I am Brian Sipsy, and as always, I have the great pleasure of being joined by my co-host to the East Coast, that's Matt Shipman. How are you today, Matt? I am good, Brian. We're back to Saratoga. We got three-year-olds again and some fast sprinters. Absolutely, Matt. Uh, yeah, I mean, Delmar's got some big races this weekend. We are going to focus on Saratoga. We are going to look at Delmar sometime soon in the near future of course the uh three-year-old division is heating up again last week we had go rocket ride pull a 12 to 1 upset in the haskell matt and i think that was your top pick it was my top pick hey even a blind handicapper finds uh cash every once in a while and i actually bet on that horse uh Got with the fixed odds wager when I walked into Monmouth Park at 11 a.m. I said, Oh, let me look and see what the odds are. You know, Go Rocket Ride was nine to two. I figured, man, eh, maybe I could get six to one or, uh, or something like that. And, uh, I got a lot more than that. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's nice money, Matt. 12 to one on a horse that should have been 12 to one. How about Mike Smith? Uh, Going on 58 years old, Matt. He's still winning big races. Gave Go Rocket Ride a really nice ride. I remember when he won the Haskell with Holy Bull, and that is going back uh, more more than three decades, I want to say. So good for Mike Smith. Good for you. Good pick. Uh, we're going to be talking about some good horses this week at Saratoga. There's our cover boy, uh, Elite Power. And I think he's uh, the way he's been rolling, Matt, that uh, – that name suits him. But first, we're going to talk about the Jim Dandy. Saratoga has been played by short fields in graded stakes so far this year, and they have a, a, a small field for the Jim Dandy, only five horses. But the good news is all five of them are good horses. They are good horses. Four of them, Brian, are uh, graded stakes winners. We got horses from the Kentucky Derby, from the Belmont Stakes, and uh, the fifth horse is a pretty fast, promising, lightly raced Brad Cox horse in Saudi Crown. Yeah, well, you, you mentioned four graded stakes winners. Saudi Crown missed being a graded stakes winner in his third lifetime start by a nose last time. So impressive start to his career. Two nice wins at Keeneland and Churchill Downs. And then he went uh, head and head down the stretch after setting the pace in the grade three Dwyer and uh, just got the uh, just got beat uh, uh, by a nose by a decent horse in Fort Bragg. Uh, he was game. He's fast. There's not a lot of speed in here, Matt. Let's throw up that time form U.S. pace projector right away on the Jim Dandy, and you'll see that this favors horses on or near the early lead. The only true speed in the race is Saudi Crown. Now he's going longer, two turns for the first time. He's facing really top horses for the first time, but that's an advantage for Saudi Crown. Yeah, it is, Brian. It's a big advantage. Uh, and, you know, considering, like you said, that he's being asked to go farther than he ever, ever, ever has and around two turns for the first time, being able to get out front, maybe loose on the lead and get into a nice steady pace would be a good way for him to possibly accomplish those firsts yeah saudi crown becomes dangerous even though he is certainly stepping up in class like i said three good races to start his career an interesting horse for trainer brad cox who actually matt has three of the five in here there's uh 60 of the field is brad cox it's like a chad brown turf race but of course there's some good non Brad Cox horses in the race. And, and we should start talking about Forte now. Irad Ortiz Jr., the two-year-old champion. He's the morning line favorite. We listed him at seven to five on our morning line, Matt. I think he'll probably be lower when they spring the gates open Saturday afternoon for the mile and eighth Jim Dandy. Yeah, certainly wouldn't surprise me if he's lower than that, and probably deservedly so. He had his five race winning streak. Uh derailed in the Belmont Stakes. It is a winning streak that began back uh, last summer when he won the hopeful at Saratoga. So we know that Forte enjoys the racing surface there. Of course, things didn't go on schedule with the campaign that was planned out for Forte by 
Todd Pletcher and Mike Rapoli when he was scratched late in the Kentucky Derby, and then that forced him to not be able to run in the Preakness, which meant that he went into the Belmont Stakes with 10 weeks without a race and still finished second with a good rally down the stretch. Comes back now with blinkers on, Brian, um, and hearing that in recent workouts, they have helped uh, Forte stay focused on racing. Yeah, that's interesting for a few reasons. There's a lot of interesting points you made there. First, let's talk about the blinkers because he's a horse who looks like in the stretch there for a while, the last, uh, the last few races, I guess, the Florida Derby and the Belmont. He was uh, maybe, I don't want to say floundering just a little bit, but it took him a while to hit his best stride. And when he did, he really took off in both races because the Belmont, it certainly looked like he might not even be second for a while until he kicked it in late and passed other horses for second. So if you're going to lose a five-race winning streak, an excellent, impressive, graded stakes, Eclipse award-winning five-race winning streak that he had, that second-place Belmont was an awfully good race to have the streak broken because he ran well, like you say, after a 10 race uh, uh or after a five race winning streak excuse me or a 10 week layoff that was my point uh the other thing uh, you talked about was the fact that the winning streak started in the hopeful and that's at saratoga so uh being able to do well on the main track at saratoga is a good thing to have not all horses love saratoga and uh, we know forte has won nicely over the track we also know he's won on a wet track and they're talking about on Saturday, at uh, unfortunately at Saratoga, that there could be some uh, pretty substantial rain. There are thunder sh uh, showers uh, uh, projected throughout the day, so we could be—you never know for sure—two days out. But we could be looking at a wet track on Jim Dandy Day, so that's something to keep in mind. Forte's won on a, on a wet track at Saratoga. Another horse who's won at a wet on a wet track and also at Saratoga, not in the same race, was Disarm Matt. And Disarm is one of the more interesting horses. He's the only other non-Broad Cox in the race. But Disarm broke his maiden very impressively at Saratoga last summer, had a long layoff, and has been steadily getting better race to race as a three-year-old. Yeah, absolutely, Brian. So uh, another one that we know like Saratoga and has run big at Saratoga. Uh, and I guess, you know, that long layoff, you know, Steve Asmussen has taken his time with this arm when he came back it was on the kentucky derby trail um he ended up actually running pretty well with limited experience when he was fourth in the kentucky derby and came back last month to get a grade three victory in the mat win at churchill downs that's right and and the, and the mat win wasn't easy because he had to run down verifying on that sloppy track and he did a good job of doing it. We're taking a look at the pace projector one more time. We already saw Saudi Crown uh, as the real speed in this race. They're projecting uh, Forte with the blinkers on and also Hit Show as uh, potential chasers. I don't think Disarm will be that far back. Uh, he's in fourth here in the five horse race. Angel of Empire did show more speed last time in the Belmont Stakes, but I think they got it right with him being the most likely horse to be last early in that. So, It'll be interesting to see who chases Saudi Crown and who goes after him first. Uh, I, I think that the um, uh, Cox Barn has some interesting horses in there, and especially how the race is going to set up. Angel of Empire could be last early. Saudi Crown could be first early. Maybe Hit Show is with Forte in second early, and Hit Show is another horse we can't ignore. Yeah, we can't, Brian. Uh, um, Hit Show ran in uh, the Belmont Stakes most recently, was fourth, was fifth in the Kentucky Derby. Certainly not um, as impressive performances as uh, we talked about for Disarm and Forte in those big races. Hit show on the Derby Trail preparing for those races, was second in the Wood Memorial and got a graded stakes victory in the Withers at Aqueduct. I don't know. Uh, to me, uh, Hit Show seems to be maybe a notch below uh, so far talking about Forte and Disarm. 
Yeah, I, I, yeah, and, and I think people might uh, question whether he's a notch below disarm. Maybe he is, maybe he isn't, uh, because I think he's run good races. The Withers, he won for fun. The Wood Memorial, he was probably very unlucky to lose that race. He ended up losing by a nose, but he was banged around in between horses pretty good in there. And the Derby, don't forget, he showed a little bit of speed and stayed on well to be fifth. And last time, he was fourth, that he did for fourth with his more respected stable mate, Angel of Empire. Uh, and he was not far behind Forte, who, uh, who, who, who rallied the most at the end to be second. So Hit Show's run a lot of good races. Luis Saez is on him this time. Hit Show could be uh, chasing his stable mate early. And I guess I'm with you in that I like him fifth best in this five horse field, but it's there are no throwouts in this five horse field. The one we haven't really talked about yet is Angel of Empire, Matt. Impressive winner of both the Grade 2 Risen Star at Fairgrounds, the Grade 1 Arkansas Derby at Oaklawn Park. And he ran a very good race in the Kentucky Derby where he rallied strongly. And he was the one finishing the best out of anybody when he was third in the Kentucky Derby. The Belmont, he was a little closer to the pace, as I mentioned. Uh, he'll probably be a little farther back this time. Yeah, I think so. And, you know... Uh... Uh, uh, Angel of Empire ended up being the favorite in the Kentucky Derby, even though uh, Forte, who didn't get to run in the race, was expected to be the favorite. Um, you mentioned that grade one victory in the Arkansas Derby, uh, which is noteworthy. I don't know if that was one of the best Arkansas Derby fields that we have seen in recent years. Um, like you said, probably will be will be farther behind there's going to be other horses uh making moves i guess uh angel of empire will try and make the last move and what they hope to be the winning move but i don't know forte is a tough going to be a tough target to run down yeah um, among others i think all of them will be tough interesting what cox has with that clear speed horse in here now and and maybe that'll end up helping his other horse Angel of Empire, it's hard to know, uh, but a, a really nice five horse field. As five horse fields go, uh, I think you can make a case for anyone, I've, any of them. I think Matt and I both are uh, agreeing that Hit Show is the least likely winner of the five, but he's awfully good to be the long shot of the field. Saudi Crown, Dangerous Speed, Angel of Empire just keeps running good races. Disarm looks like a very interesting horse coming into Saratoga this summer, and Forte as the horse to beat in the Jim Dandy, uh, two races before. And again, we're talking about a possible wet track. That's something to keep in mind as you're handicapping. Is it, is it a fast track? Is it, is, it a, is it a wet track? Is it a sloppy track, a sealed or a muddy track? We'll see, but uh, uh, keep an eye on that as we get closer to making our bets on Saturday afternoon. The Vanderbilt is elite powers race to win or elite powers race to lose, how, however you look at it. Uh, we have even money on our early uh, odds. I, I think he will be lower than that when they uh, open the gates again. Uh, Elite Power has won how many straight races, Matt? Seven straight races, Brian, beginning with his maiden special weight victory a little bit over a year ago and moved into Stakes Company, uh, uh, won a rich sprint race in Saudi along with the uh, Breeders' Cup Sprint, which was uh, certainly the, 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 the most impressive uh, victory uh, in that streak and, and continuing on with wins in the True North, win in the Vosburg. He's got seven in a row uh, for Bill Mott. And if any trainer is good at putting together long win streaks with horses, we know Bill Mott is. Yeah, that that that's uh, that's smoking your cigar there, sir. You're <laughs> you're uh, you're on it with Bill Mott and winning streaks. Of course, we're talking about cigar going back. Oh boy, Matt, uh, going back thirty yeah. years, almost thirty years ago. But anyway, uh, elite power. When I first really thought that elite power was an elite type of horse, was at Saratoga last year. It was an allowance race. But he just looked so good beating some really strong allowance competition last year that you just knew Elite Power's career was ready to take off. And take off it has even more than we might have thought watching that 
impressive race at Saratoga last year. Elite power is really good. And his two races this year might be his best two races. Yeah, I know he won the Breeders' Cup uh, sprint to close out the, the year last year, but he's just looked so good this year that it's hard to talk about anybody else in this field other than elite power, but there are other horses in the race. Matt, I, we're, we're talking about the Jim Dandy and the Vanderbilt, so I'm calling it the Dandy and the Vandy double here. We're also looking at horses on the rail and in the five hole. And I'm going to ask you, what's the difference, Matt, real quick, between the one and the five? An E. An E. You got it. Boy, I thought I'd stump you with that. <laughs> the only difference between the one and the five is an E. Gunite and gun it. Of course, there's more differences than that because I think Gunite, the five, is one of the best sprinters in the country. Elite Power, I think nine out of ten people right now would say he's America's best sprinter. But Gunite is in the conversation, Matt. Gunite is in the conversation among the best sprinters in the country. He ran a very good race in the Breeders' Cup Dirt Mile last year. He, too, I think, has been better this year, one year after a good Breeders' Cup run. He also has good experience, a former hopeful winner at Saratoga, uh, a good second in the uh, uh, three-year-old stakes last year. Gunite has run good races at Saratoga, coming in off a very nice win. Much like Elite Power, he's had one race since running overseas, and it was very good. His was in Kentucky. Yeah, <clears throat> and Gunite ran a couple times in the – Middle East. He was second, actually, behind Elite Power in that race uh, in Saudi Arabia, and then was third uh, in Maidan. Came back and he unleashed a corker of a race, Brian, in the Aristides at uh, at Churchill Downs. Just a super impressive uh, uh, run that earned one of the one of the biggest speed figures of the year. Yeah, yeah, Gunite, uh, don't sleep on Gunite. Everybody loves Elite Power, and they should, with those seven-race winning streak. Uh, so impressive has he been in those seven races. But Gunite is for real, and Gunite is now a mature sprinter. Now, we're going to look at the time form U.S. pace projector real quick here, and we're going to see that uh, there is some speed in here for Elite Power to run out, but I want to make a couple points here. First off, yeah, there's some speed, but Elite Power is a horse who likes to rally in these sprints. And he's uh, he, you know, he's fifth in the pace projector here, in the number four horse. But the one horse, uh, see, I'm doing it. The one, I'm getting the one and the five mixed up already. The five horse, Gunite, certainly has more early speed than does Elite Power. Looking at the time form pace projector and looking at past performances of all their good races they've run, Gunite has a chance to get the jump on Elite Power. Yeah, I think it sets up that way for sure. Uh, uh, and the uh, the two horses they have on the lead have shown some speed in the in the past, but certainly don't have the class to go with uh, Gunite and Elite Power for sure. Yeah, it, they they should set up a very uh, a solid pace in this six furlong Grade One Vanderbilt. Uh, but neither uh, Awesome Aaron, the three, or the seven, Little Vic. They, they both should be long shots. And uh, they're both unlikely, frankly, to uh, handle the pressure. I think it'll come from Gunite first and Elite Power second. And we'll see how good Gunite can be trying to hold off the power that is Elite Power. But I think it, I think it makes for a very interesting race. One horse we need to talk about as a potential... A uh, uh, threat here, at least uh, to, to finish first or second, is Dean Delivers. Dean Delivers is a, a Florida based horse who's run almost all his races down there. But going back to his two year old season, this is a really, really nice sprinter. I don't think he is one of the best sprinters in the country. And I would put Elite Power and Gunite as, as possibly number one and two in the country, if, if not very close to that. But Dean Delivers is a legitimate horse, and he also has some, some speed, uh, certainly enough speed to also be getting that jump on the, on the leaders. Yeah, and he's coming up to uh, New York with two races, two victories in a row in stakes races at Gulfstream Park, most recently in the 
in the smile sprint, which, you know, attracts some um, fast horses. And the Gulfstream Park based jockey, Amicial Jaramillo, um, is coming up for the mount. Yeah, Dean, Dean Delivers is a nice horse. And I think that win in the smile was his best race of his career. So maybe we shouldn't take that too lightly. Although we are looking again at some really sensational sprinters that he's going to try to beat as he comes up to Saratoga in elite power and Gunite. Uh, two very interesting races at Saratoga, Matt. They're two races apart. There's an allowance race in between. So the Vanderbilt will come first. Two races after will be the Jim Dandy. But these are these are races with Eclipse Award ramifications. They're grade one races, and they, they seem like it, even if it's not the biggest field, especially in the Jim Dandy. Uh, we're going to do our top picks for the two races we talked about already early, and then I have some uh, a little bit more talk. I want a, a few subjects I want to get uh, uh, going with you that have happened recently up in Saratoga before we call it a show, Matt. But we're going to do top picks first. We're going to start with the Jim Dandy, and the man that picked Go Rocket Ride as a winner at twelve to one last week should definitely go first. I will do that, Brian. I I, I can tell you right now. I'm not going to be giving you a 12 to one shot uh, to win either one of these races. Matt, people are expecting you to pick a 12 to one shot now and, and not horse to win. So you, you have to pick a 12 to one shot. Uh, well, I wish I could. I'm sorry, Brian. Uh, 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 you know me, they know me, you know, I, I don't pick uh, long shots for the sake of just picking them. I, I, Liked Go Rocket ride, uh, ride to win that race. Even even at five to one, I would have been happy. I was tickled with twelve to one. But I'm not giving you that this time. Uh, uh, we got a couple of horses in these big races that are just flat out excellent horses. And I and I think in the Jim Dandy that at that Forte. Coming off the Belmont Stakes, which will certainly help him be back on a more on a favorable kind of schedule. Uh, uh, we shouldn't forget all of the good things that Forte has done, did in that win streak. I have to go with Forte to win Jim Dandy. All right. So Matt is going Forte in the Jim Dandy. And I'm going to disagree. I'm going to pick against Forte. I'm going to pick a long shot. I don't think it'll be 12 to 1. The problem with Forte for me is I just think everybody's thinking like Matt or thinking similarly. Forte is such a nice horse. He's won at Saratoga. Even his one loss in the last almost a year now, he ran a very good race and he may have needed the Belmont to, a, to an extent. Fletcher has horses ready to run in, in a race like the Jim Dandy. A lot of reasons to like Forte. And for that reason, I think he's going to be four to five or so, seven to ten. I, I don't like those odds. He's coming out of the Belmont. Some horses, some horses drop down from 12 furlongs to nine furlongs really well. Some don't, though. Some are just a little bit duller coming back. I, I don't know if that'll be the case for Forte, but I see this as a very good race. And I see these horses, these four other horses in the Jim Dandy, as closer to Forte than I think most people think, or than the odds will be showing on Saturday. For that reason, I'm going to try to beat Forte at very low odds. And Disarm is my horse. I like the fact that he's got a big race over Saratoga, and I really like the progression. While some of these horses are coming out of the 12 furlong Belmont, Disarm's coming out of a nice win at nine furlongs last month. I kind of prefer that than coming out of the 12 furlong Belmont. Disarm is a horse who I think could make some serious noise this summer for trainer Steve Asmussen. I don't know about you, Matt, but Steve Asmussen always seems to kind of have big things going on at the summer at Saratoga. So for me, disarm in the Jim Dandy to pull an upset. How about the Vanderbilt? Yeah, and I, let me just say, I, I can't blame you for picking disarm. We've liked that horse uh, since uh, since his maiden win. And and quite frankly, out of the, uh, the Brad Cox horses, I like that Saudi crown to complete the exacta. Anyway, getting to the, to the Vanderbilt once again, uh, I'm going to be on the favorite. I'm going with Elite Power. Yeah, I know it's uh, seven races in a row and win streaks are tough to keep going, but Bill Mott's got a campaign planned out for this year 
where Elite Power has not run that much this year. Looking to win in the Vanderbilt, probably get in another race before they head to try and win the Breeders' Cup again. Yeah, and and there were some there there were some reasons that I picked against Forte uh, at odds probably below even money. It's harder for me to poke any holes in Elite Power. I mean, he has just been a sprinting superstar since uh since, well since that winning streak began and he will be tough over a track that he's already won at the one thing i have going for me by picking against elite power is i think gunite is really really good i have more faith in gunite than any of the horses that i was looking at to upset forte in the gym dandy but gunite is a top sprinter love the ways coming up to the race uh like i said asmussen seems to just bring horses up at this time of the year to saratoga ready to roll I did, I did kind of say Gun I might get first jump on Elite Power. I also think our morning line where we had him even money two to one, there probably will be a bigger difference in the odds. So I'm I'm taking a shot and I'm doing it again with Steve Asmussen. I'm gonna pick Gunite to upset Elite Power in the Vanderbilt on Saturday. Two big races there, Saratoga, Matt. We're excited about that. Uh Nest. Nest returned on Sunday in the Shoe V. We we didn't really talk about the Shoe V. Four horse race. Uh, I I don't like those four horse races, but uh, Nest uh, got the jump on. <laughs> there it is. Got the jump on Clarier, and she was unbeatable. Uh, Irad Ortiz made an aggressive move there, as he tends to do, and she ran away from Clarier. Clarier ran a big race, kept trying, but Nest ran big for her first race in what eight nine months. Yeah, that is for sure. Nest was best in that four horse field. Um, and, and, you know, credit to Todd Pletcher because uh, Nest has had some setbacks, had, I think, a lung infection or something along the way, and was way delayed in making her debut for this year. I think Pletcher would have liked to probably had her in a race at Belmont Park in the, uh, uh, in the spring, early summer meeting. But uh, she came back gangbuster. Yes, she had the pace advantage, and she took advantage of that, but uh, didn't slow down and wasn't given any ground to Clarier, who has been so impressively determined in late stages of races so far. Yeah, if I was on the Clarier camp, I wouldn't at all be uh, upset or worried about the result of that four-horse race. Clarier ran another big race. It just did not set up very well for her. But it's nice to see Ness back, and Ness ran huge in that shoe V. Echo Zulu just came back the other day. Again, a four-horse field and a graded stake at Saratoga. But Echo Zulu, I thought, looked as good or better than ever in winning the Honorable Miss. So nice to see that as well. I also want to talk about the Derby winner, Matt. He beat – he was beaten, I should say, by Go Rock and Ride, your horse. I liked what I saw from Mage, and it reminded me a lot of what I saw in the Florida Derby from Mage. Yeah, that's a good point, Brian. Uh, because in the you know in the Florida Derby, Mage was second behind uh, Forte, and and hey, uh, you know heading into the Haskell, uh, it was sort of a little bit I, I wouldn't say last minute, but a little bit of a surprise decision from the connections of Mage that they came back and uh, got a race in for Mage in the Haskell. Uh, in preparation for the Travers. They, amongst uh, the camp of several other top three-year-olds, have set the Travers as a goal. So it was a good performance for Mage off the bench, maybe not 100%, but uh, uh, a real nice uh, rally for second for the Kentucky Derby winner. Yeah, I think the Kentucky Derby winner is uh, going to be heard from more this year, and I think that Haskell will set them up for a good run in the Travers. The Travers should be a heck of a race, but I think Mage will be one of the main contenders, the Kentucky Derby winner. As we said, Del Mar's uh, loaded this week, uh, defunded, has a nice uh, group of horses in the San Diego. That's another thing to look for. We'll be talking Del Mar and Saratoga, of course, now for weeks and weeks here as the summer heats up on Horse Center. Matt, before we go, let me get a parting shot from you, my friend. Yeah, Del Mar, Saratoga, uh, Seems like this summer there there's so many horses contending for 
top three-year-old honors at this point with the three different winners in the triple crown and go rocket ride throwing his hat in there and mage coming back forte uh in the in the gym dandy uh lots of excitement in that division as the summer goes on yeah it should be fun it should be interesting starting with this gym dandy leading to the travers we also have the Whitney next week, and that's going to be our headline race, the Whitney led by Cody's Wish next week on Horse Center. Matt and I want to thank all of you for watching. If you haven't yet subscribed, please do that now. That helps us out. Turn on those notifications. Leave us a comment. We love to read what you have to think about the show or the horses or anything else down in the comment section. We also want to thank our friend in the Louisville office, Candace Curtis, for the uh, great race graphics. Also, Derby Wars, our sponsor, the best contest site out there. And, of course, Time Form US for the pace projections. Most of all, though, folks, Matt and I appreciate you watching every week. We will see you next week talking Whitney right here on Horse Center. Until then, good luck and have a good weekend.